Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are, early summer, spring. The birds are singing, the flowers are blooming. It's wonderful, isn't it? I hope you've all been very busy. Well, I know you have, and I am impressed with your submissions. I may have said to you once or even twice that there are three ways of getting good comments and, and good marks from a judge. One is to give the judge an intriguing photo, one that he really has to look into closely. That'll get you an extra mark. Another is for the image to tell a story. And the third, and some people have achieved this, and it's not easy to achieve, is to make the judge laugh. Well, well done. You've done terrifically well. And I have examined every image closely. So let's get on with it. Here we go, into our critique. Well, image number one, beautifully seen with the, the, uh, the backlight coming through those lovely tulips. I do like them. The image, I feel, could have been improved by uh, flipping it left to right so that the bend on the tulips is going to the right in the same direction as that in which we write with a pen. Uh, perhaps it would have been possible, but this is where judges fall flat on their face, to have moved the camera to the left so as to uh, use more of that dark background uh, against which these beautifully lit tulips are illuminated. I really like that backlighting. However, my eye is distracted by the, um, the extension uh, to the property at the back of the house and that would be, it's not really possible to crop it out, but it would have been possible to miss it out altogether by moving the camera to the left. Nonetheless, it's well seen, very well lit, and I like that image very much indeed. So well done on that one. Image number two. Well, it clearly is a spring onion. I like it. And out of all of the images, this one made me laugh. I looked at it and I thought, what the dickens is this? And by gum, by golly, it's a spring onion. Actually, the, the author here has used the idea of the onion in the lower left corner. Uh, and the spring going up to the top right hand corner in what I would call the right direction. So I very much like that. Um, however, if I read it the way it's portrayed, it's a onion spring rather than a spring onion. So um, <laughs> nonetheless, <laughs> it made me laugh and it gets a tick in the box. So I liked it. I don't care if anyone else doesn't like it. But I like it, so well done on that one. Image number three, um, a spring of water emitting from this, uh, what would you say, it is a fountain with the face and the fingers. I think that's very well seen. And it shows how the uh, photographer has put their camera down low. They've managed to superimpose the, the image of the fountain and the squirt of water beautifully and uh, yes I very much like that. The face on the uh, fountain bowl uh, isn't doing a lot for me and my eye is distracted by looking at the face and then looking back to the, uh, the water spout itself and I think perhaps that could have been cropped into a portrait uh, orientation. Nonetheless it's well exposed it's sharp in all the right places. The, uh, the focus is precise and the aperture is exactly right so that the trees in the background are dropping into softness. Exactly what the doctor ordered. So well done. I like it a lot. And um, yep, more of those please. More of those. That's really good. Very well seen. Moving on. Image number five. Again, the author has taken great note 
of where to bring in the subject of this photograph from the left hand bottom corner up to the right hand corner exactly in the right direction now these lichens are intriguing so it it really is a tick in the box for intriguing uh, the judge and I very much like that the background is beautifully soft and could have been softer had you been able to open up your aperture to a, a even to an even wider aperture and remember that is a small number big hole small number big hole is a wide aperture and will allow backgrounds to drop into softness and depending on which lens you uh, you used um, you might even have got the background totally unrecognizable but that's well seen and well taken and uh, I like the uh, the composition of that so well done with the composition and uh, a very intriguing photo so ticks in the box two ticks in the box very good Number six, looking through these twigs at a, a field of oilseed rope, rape rather, and um, very well seen to give us that flavour of May, um, spring, beautiful colours. This, uh, this particular crop is irritating because it's so bright, it's so brilliant, it's asking you to take photos of it. And in this case, the photographer has tried to use the, the composition of frame within a frame, looking through the branches of the hedge, um, the hedgerow nearest to the, to the camera. It may have been improved by zooming in somewhat so that we got rid of most of the branches, but retained, the, um, retained some of them so as to give us the frame within the frame aspect I like that a lot uh, you're never in control of the weather and unfortunately um, this is one of those gray rather boring skies which are actually ideal for photography because you don't have the bright highlights and the uh, very very dark shadows that you would have had on a bright sunny day you also have avoided one of those boring blue skies Nonetheless, it's well seen, it's well taken, and I think perhaps a crop, a serious crop, or going back and doing it again, and zooming in, lose most of the sky, lose lots off of the right and the left hand side, and keep it as a, as a uh, portrait orientation um, composition. So yes, well seen, thank you for that one. Image number seven. Ah, now here we have an excellent image. I love the sky. I love the way that the uh, daisies in the foreground are absolutely pin sharp, and I particularly am intrigued by the, the red stroke line around the image. I'm not sure that red actually complements this uh, image, and um, perhaps the author would consider putting a different color stroke on it perhaps uh, the grey of the clouds if um, he or she knows how to uh, pick up with a colour selector the, uh, the grey of the clouds and change that uh, red stroke to a grey one um, but it's very well seen I love the sky look ladies and gentlemen at the shadows of the trees on the right hand side look how the shadows are coming from the trees nearly towards us what does that tell us the photographer has taken this photo into the light. The exact thing that your mother told you not to do, but it works, it's brilliant, I love that technique. It does in fact give us a really good three-dimensional photo and I like it very much. Gives me an idea of one of the challenges I could give you in the future. Or would that be too difficult? Well, I'll tell you later what the next challenge is. So here we go. An excellent image, very well seen. Uh, how could we improve it? The nearest tree has been clipped at the top. That's a shame. Uh, the red stroke, to be honest, would be much improved by turning it into grey or possibly the blue of the sky. Um, other than that, I think that's a cracker. 
and I'd put that into my collection of highly commended from which I'm going to have to choose a winner. This is going to be hard this time. It is going to be hard. There are so many good images. Let's move on to image number eight. We have here this uh, statue of the girl springing from what looks like a, a tuft of grass. So it is spring. I like that very much. I particularly like the choice of the time of day when the shadows are falling on this delightful uh, statue and giving us this dappled light and shadow. Dappled light and shadow gives you lots and lots of interesting effects. And I do like that a lot. The uh, image uh, was taken, the photograph was taken at a very good time of day with an interesting sky. And clearly the photographer has positioned their tripod, positioned their camera, framed it and stood and waited for the clouds just to come where he or she wanted them. So spend some time, wait for the clouds, wait for the light and they've taken a very good photo here. One or two little points I might point out. We've got a bit of twig in the top left right hand uh, side which all too easily could have been removed. Um, I'm wondering whether if this is the same photographer, but even if it's not, perhaps a stroke around that uh, image would improve it even more insofar as it would frame it somehow and uh, give us that three-dimensional view. I like that image a lot. Now, there is a problem, <clears throat> and the problem is not with your photograph, but with the the fact that if you are taking photos of someone else's artwork, whether it's graffiti, whether it's a bronze statue, whether it's a, 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 any sort of artwork that somebody else has done, um, you will only score marks from a judge if you have added something to that photo. If it's just a straightforward photograph of somebody else's artwork, to be honest, it doesn't begin to compete. Now, in this case, the photographer has chosen a good time of day. They have waited for the clouds to move in, and I think they have added something to this photo that otherwise would not have been visible. So, yes, this qualifies, and I think it's a good photo. Moving on to number nine. And here we have um, a rather difficult photo to take, but has been successfully taken of this avocet. Uh, I don't know if this is when we went to the uh, Blue House Farm, but it certainly is an avocet. It certainly is a, uh, an area uh, that they populate, and are very much like that. It's very difficult to take moving objects, so you have to plan what you're doing. And certainly when I um, take mine, for instance, the ones that I sent you uh, by email earlier in the month, I would start at a shutter speed at of a one thousandth of a second. <clears throat> That's my starting shutter speed. Now you know the triangle, the ISO, the aperture and the shutter speed. And in this case, if I set my shutter speed to a thousandth of a second, I would necessarily have to increase the ISO or what I frequently call the ASA. It's just the same thing, it's just the old phrase. So a uh, one thousandth of a second at one thousand ASA is my starting point. I would then reduce either the shutter speed or the ASA uh, accordingly, depending on what's going on. Now clearly, in this case, this avocet is at a very, very difficult um, part of its flight. Uh, its wings are moving, it is moving, the photographer needs to pan with the moving subject and try, try and try again to keep the subject pin sharp. That will, um, the, the panning of the camera will be shown by the background being blurred horizontally. Um, well attempted, and well done, lots more mileage in that one and I would request the photographer to go back to such a place as uh, Blue House Farm, now you know where it is, and uh, try again. Pan with the animal, pan as you do it. Take a thousand images. If you're lucky, ten of them 
will be sharp. And uh, this is a very, very good attempt, so well done. Image number 10, the shepherd's crook of the uh, evolving fern. This is a classic image. I love it. Really good. I love the colours, the way that the background are these uh, autumnal leaf, uh, leaf colours, the way that the uh, photographer has chosen to bring the, the stalk of the uh, fern in from the bottom left-hand corner going up to the top right. Ticks two boxes straight away. Very good. Where, ladies and gentlemen, is your eye going? Are you following up the stalk? Do you go round the circle at the top? And then do you end up going to that light, bright section on the left-hand side? Well, my eye is distracted by that, which is uh, a, a little negative point, but I love that. Very well seen. And uh, the fact that the photographer has got down low to take it has such a pin-sharp photo with such a beautifully soft background, I think, uh, puts that in the highly commended category. It's another one. Very, very good. I'm impressed with that one. Well done. Image number 11. Uh, now, I'm not a botanist, uh, and I don't know whether that's a Celandine or not, but nonetheless, we have this beautifully positioned yellow flower in the top third, one third in, so the photographer has been thinking about composition. Very good indeed. I love the way the, the flower, its petals, its stamens are pin sharp, and the way that the background drops into softness. That's beautifully chosen. Of course you've used your tripod. I'll give you a little tip here if you're taking photos of flowers. Take with you some knitting needles. Knitting needles, I hear you say? Yes, knitting needles, because then you can hold the flower still as you gently wind some wool around the stalk of the flower to the knitting needle. Make sure, of course, that the knitting needle and the wool are out of the frame of your, your photo, and it just steadies the, the plant. It's very difficult to take wildflowers if there's any breeze at all, because they'll move, they'll shake, they'll shiver, and then you've lost the photo. So knitting needles in your kit bag, please. You can get them very cheaply in a, a local charity shop, uh, Little Havens. There are other charity shops available, but that's close. Let's notice something else about this photo. The photographer has put a stroke around it. Look at the way that that stroke frames the whole photograph. And the stroke isn't irritatingly red. It is a dark olive green, beautifully chosen, very well positioned. I like that a lot. Again, that's in my highly commended category. I like it. Image number 12. Beautifully seen, frame within a frame, spring scenery beyond. I like that a lot. That would make a very, very good print on the wall. Yep, I like it. How could we improve it? I'm not sure I could improve it. I think if I'd taken that, I'd be very proud of it. Do we need quite so much lattice work? Would it be possible, perhaps, to just zoom in or possibly crop off half an inch from the top, half an inch from the bottom, and half an inch from the left? Perhaps yes. Try it. Try it and see. If it works, keep it. If it doesn't work, move on. But I think that's a winner. I really like that. Tick several boxes. What could we do to improve it? Should we vignette it? I can hear in my mind's eye, my mind's ear, Suzanne saying, oh, yes, it should be vignetted. Well, yeah, okay. Vignette, and how about a stroke? Yeah? Beautiful image. I like that a lot. I'm going to put that in my highly commended category. So well done on those. Number 13. Very well seen. Very pastoral scene. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, the lighting at this time. 
it's not strong sunlight. How do you know? Because there are no dark shadows. There are no bright highlights. The sheep in the meadow, you can almost hear a pastoral symphony being played in the background. Maybe Mo can put a, a soundtrack of the pastoral symphony uh, on the video when he uh, eventually produces it, we'll see. Beautifully chosen sky. Photographer has waited for the cloud to move, a little bit of blue to come in. I'm wondering, however, about the saturation. It does seem to be mildly desaturated. And if only in the photo processing uh, time, uh, one could have just brought up the, the saturation of the colours. Have to be very careful with the greens. You might end up with the uh, Kodachrome green that jumps out of the screen at you, which we really don't want. But I think that's well seen. It does say spring. I can almost taste mint sauce. Very good. Image number 14, snow or hail or sneet, uh, sneet, sleet has, has landed on the grass. Uh, we have this garden scenery beautifully framed by the plant in its pot on the right and the, uh, uh, what do you call that, is a post with a, a tub hanging from it on the left hand side. My eye is brought in very directly along the path from the bottom left hand corner, beautifully chosen. That composition is taking me in beautifully. It's held in by the plant on the right and the post on the left, and I'm taken down the garden to see what's going on. And I want to go down that path. I want to look there, my eye is taken in. So that's very good indeed. I'm not distracted by anything at all, um, though of course a gardener, um, maybe, uh, a scarecrow or um, uh, something in the in the distance there. I can see some something that looks like a bird feeder or a, oh, I don't know what it is, something in the background there that's intriguing me. And once again, the photographer has put a stroke on it. Happens to be a white stroke, but nonetheless, I like it very much. Uh, come on, Suzanne, what are we going to say? Vignette it, I hear you say. Yes, very slight vignette just in that top left hand corner to bring it down a smidge just a smidge i like that very much it's very well seen i'm not sure the focus is quite what i'd like it to be the distance i want to be rather more in focus if that were possible so that's a smaller aperture bigger number so something like f16 rather than f11 or f5.6 uh, would just give us a bit more depth of field and focus on the uh, the background. If you think that that's going to take too long in terms of uh, shutter speed exposure, I'm sure you already did put it on a tripod, but you quite clearly could have increased your uh, ASA, ISO, and just plain doubled it. So if your ISO was, I'm going to guess, 200, double it, make it 400. That's a whole stop. A stop is a doubling, or for that matter, a halving. That's what a stop is. So if that were, for instance, um, F5.6, double it, F11. Double that, F22. So that's two stops. But that, of course, would need you to double your ASA, ISO, if it was 100, double it 200, double it again 400. That again is two stops. Try it and see, you'll see it works. Very good, well seen, just want a little more focus. Tick in the box for the stroke, tick in the box for seeing it, well done. Image 15, backlit tulips, beautifully framed. I like that a lot. It looks as if it's rained earlier in the day or there's dew on the background uh, hedgerow. Uh, I'm not distracted by any extensions to the next door's property. Uh, I'm, I'm very much appreci appreciating the, uh, 
uh, backlighting as the light comes through the petals of the tulips and the light comes through that delicious green of the uh, the foliage yep very nice indeed I think that's beautiful how could we improve it come on Suzanne tell me speak up vignette it that's right well done I like that a lot thank you for submitting that it's a chocolate box image isn't it I could almost imagine printing that and pasting it onto a, a, a chocolate box and, and giving it to my partner. Whoever your partner is, photographer, print it, put it on some chocolates and give it to the, the love of your life. Image number 16, spring, and it certainly is spring. <laughs> I like it. Well, ticks in the box. You get a tick in the box for making the photographer, the, the, the judge laugh. So that's it. It's a spring. Does it do anything for me apart from making me laugh? Well, actually, it's jolly well seen. Look, ladies and gentlemen, how sharp that spring is. And look how the bricks in the background drop into so soft insignificance. It's, it's really well exposed. Beautifully sharp. And uh, I like it. I like it very much. Made me laugh. Thanks for submitting it. Well done. Image 17, the close-up macro photo, not easy to do, of the uh, stamen and the uh, stigma of this, uh, what I take to be a tulip. Very well taken indeed. So sharp is it that I can actually see pollen grains on the stigma. So that's very well done. The aperture has been chosen to be so wide that the petals are dropping into softness. Now with this type of photography the depth of field is very very shallow. It's rather like uh, portraiture, you know you can focus on the eyes and the tip of the nose will be out of focus. In this case the uh, stigma and the uh, to, and the, the top of the stigma are just on the edge of sharpness. The stamen, the three of them, are beautifully sharp and the petals are soft. Exactly what the doctor ordered. Well done. Further, the image is coming in. My eye is brought in from the bottom left-hand corner up to the right. Well done. I like that a lot. Could we improve it? Would a little bit of vignetting on the top right and the top, uh, the bottom right improve it a little bit? Would producing a stroke, maybe what colour would we choose? A grey stroke around the image have improved it? Well, either way, try it and see. If you have the uh, photo processing software, give it a spin. I like that image a lot. It's very, very precise is technically difficult and it has been achieved so well done i'd put that into my highly commended category because that is not easy and ladies and gentlemen if you have tried uh, if you haven't tried macro photography like this give it a try it's not easy so well done to the uh, the photographer that took this i think that's beautifully taken yep well done Image 18, now that is spring, isn't it? The lovely blossom on this tree. The light isn't strong, which is good. The photographer has chosen the time at which to take this photo. Perfect timing. Um, some would say it's a boring sky behind it, but I, I think that's quite nice. If it had been a bright blue sky behind, what goes with a bright blue sky is bright sunlight, dark shadows and burned out highlights but these highlights are not burned out they're beautifully kept in and if I zoom out to see the whole of the portrait orientation it's set in a very appealing uh, uh, garden of some description I like that a lot uh, improvements, stroke it I actually do think a vignette on the bottom 
woodwork, bottom left and bottom right. And I think again it's a it's a chocolate box image. I'd like to see that printed, pasted onto a box of chocolates and given to your your beloved. I think that's nice. You might give it to your granny if anyone's got a granny. Well I know a granny, but anyway, there you go. We'll move on. Number 19, once again this uh, rapeseed, rapeseed oil plant. It, it's just begging to be photographed. This, this, this yellow is so um, iridescent almost. It, it, it says, come and take my picture. It really does, and you can't not take it. Look at what the photographer has done. They've decided to use the plants on the right-hand side to break the horizon, joining the, the land into the sky. And they've done it beautifully well. I like that very much. As a technique, if you have something with an horizon in it, to break it with maybe a pylon, or maybe a plant, or maybe a person, to, to join the land into the sky has worked very well indeed. Sky looks a bit grainy, and we've got these suspicious-looking ducks flying out of the image. And, and if only the photographer had managed to um, take those ducks out, flip them around, and turn them round, so they're flying into the image, it would have been perhaps even better. But it's a jolly good photo. Not sure about the stroke. That's that's jumping up the page. Uh, I can see why the photographer has chosen this yellow stroke. Perhaps a, a more moderate mustard colour, uh, if it had to be yellow, or a grey from the sky, uh, would have uh, been an improvement. Um, sky's a little grainy, so um, I, uh, I, I can only accept that that was the sky on the day. Um, judge the image as it's presented. Uh, and yet the, the uh, oilseed rape flowers in the foreground are pin sharp, and that's great. I actually rather like that. I think if I were um, able to produce uh, such a good photo, I'd like to just soften that sky, just blur it out a little bit, just to lose some of the grain. We've got, um, it's either a dust bunny or uh, some other splodge in the, um, in the sky, just right of centre, which looks like a, 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 an amendment, an adjustment has taken place and it hasn't quite worked. Uh, maybe it's a flying saucer. Ah, that's what it is, it's a flying saucer. Okay, I love the image. Please improve the stroke. Please retain the uh, the skill, the, the the craft of having something in the foreground, crossing the horizon, joining the background, the the land to the sky. Now, I like that a lot. That's got the potential of being a cracking good image. Uh, oh, and turn the uh, the ducks around the other way. I suppose they were there on the day. Well, let's let's accept that they were. Take them out, turn them around. They can fly back. Unfortunately, ducks have a habit of flying away from you when you want them flying towards you. But there we go, never mind. Well done. Good try. I like it a lot. Will it go into the highly commended? I think there's so much going for this photo that I am going to put it into the highly commended. So well done, uh, image number 19. Image number 20. Oh, look how well this has been taken. Once again, on a tripod, with knitting needles, holding the flower absolutely dead still, uh, sharp at the closest point. Those petals are pin sharp, as are the, uh, the, the structures in the centre of this compound flower, which I take to be uh, stamens with pollen on them. Uh, pin sharp, dropping into softness as you go across the flower. How big is this flower, ladies and gentlemen? Would you say it's two inches, three inches perhaps? Um, what's that, five, six centimetres? Uh, and you'll see how shallow the depth of field is. And this photographer has obviously perfected choice of aperture. The background has dropped into a beautiful softness. It isn't irritating. It's not distracting. It's just there as a background, doing exactly what it's meant to do. A very difficult photo to take, and it's very 
well done. Not too sure about the fuzzy edges. Uh, left hand edge looks very fuzzy to me unless it's my screen on my computer. Um, yeah, I like it. I like that a lot. I'm going to put that into the highly commended because it's so difficult to do. You've done very, very well indeed. Excellent. Well done. Number 21. A ewe and two sheep. Well, I think it's two lambs. Um, well seen, well taken, sharp where it's meant to be sharp, and dropping into softness in the background. Well done. I like that. That's a very spring-like scene, and it says spring to me. Uh, the sheep can either run away from you when you're trying to photograph them, which is most irritating, or if they're really young lambs, uh, they'll come to you because they're inquisitive, and they'll they'll really come and uh, present their, their their portraits to you. Um, so, yep, well seen. Keep it up. There's lots of sheep, lots of ewes, lots of lambs in the fields just at present. And if you haven't tried taking uh, ewes and lambs, get out there while you can before they uh, get put on the plates with a mint sauce, and uh, give it a try because that is a very good photo. I like that very much. Well taken, well seen, and well produced. Image 22 um, reminds me of War Horse, the, uh, the, the, uh, both the film, but more, more exactly the, the stage play of War Horse, which was tremendous if you saw it. So here we have a, a Hessian horse uh, with what looks like an owl perched on its head, but that's perhaps its attempt at an ear, uh, and some background. Now, this is well seen and well photographed. The photographer has focused on the Hessian of the horse, leaving by choosing the aperture appropriately the background to drop into softness. Um, so an interesting and intriguing photo. Nonetheless, it is a photo of someone else's artwork. So we have to ask ourselves, what has the photographer done uh, to change the scenery, the view? Uh, and in this case, what they've done is to choose a good aperture. Now, I know you're all very well versed by now uh, in aperture and the selection of aperture, shutter speed, ISO, the film speed that we laughingly call it, and the use of your tripods. And that's why you're all walking around with tripods. So well done with that. Um, what has the photographer done with this one? Well, come on, Suzanne. It's your turn now. What are you going to tell me? It should be vignetted. You're right. So vignetted. And that would be an improvement, perhaps. But it's well seen. I like it. It's well focused. Thank you for the photographer, to the photographer. Image 24. Uh, a horned sheep of some description. I don't know the breed of sheep this is. And it's lamb. Very well taken, if a little central. So what could the photographer have done? Ideally, to take the, the, uh, the camera and just sweep it to the right a little bit. However, the, photo the photograph as it is could be improved by taking off at least an inch from the left-hand side, giving the, the, uh, the ewe and its lamb a little more distance on the right of the image. Other than that, it's well taken, it's sharp, the aperture is appropriately selected so as to leave the background into in softness, could have been a little softer, by taking a wider aperture, smaller number, larger hole, shallower depth of field. Maybe a stroke, maybe some vignetting. I can hear Suzanne piping up, a bit of vignetting, but it's good. Yes, pleasant photo. Image 25, beautifully seen. It's a spring scene with the, uh, the reeds bringing us in 
to the, the background of the grass. Beautifully chosen time of day. I like the shadows. They're not intense, but they are giving me a three-dimensionality to the scene that I'm seeing. I very much like the, the lily pond on the bottom left-hand corner, which is bringing me into the reeds. And I'm wondering whether there are two photos here. One being the top half of the photo with the more distant lily pond, and one being the bottom half of the photo, just the lily pond held in by the reeds. I think that's a superb location. I think I'd like to have been there to take photos there myself. Yes, well chosen. I like the time of day. Longish shadows. Beautiful sky. I hate pale blue skies. But that's got some cloud in it. That's got some structure in it. I like that a lot. Perhaps just a, a tad more saturation, if you can with your software, increase the saturation. But be very careful that you don't overdo it. You don't want emerald green or Kodachrome green. You want just a tad, I would suggest, more richness in the green and perhaps a tad more warmth in the reeds just to see whether that works. Yeah, I like that. I think I'd like to put that on, on uh, my computer and, and play with it in, in Photoshop and just see what I could do with that. Yeah, I like it a lot. Well done. Well seen. Well taken. Image 26. Beautiful, beautiful image of these bluebells. In the woods, it says spring to me. I can almost taste the aroma of those bluebells. I know where that is. Well, I feel I know where it is. It probably could be a million places. But it's wonderful. Yeah, I can taste it. I'm just breathing in the taste of those bluebells. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. Yes, yes, that really is reminiscent of spring. And if a photo does that to me, it gets a tick in the box. So well done for that. I like that a lot. I think perhaps taking half an inch off of the bottom of the photo would improve it. But I can still taste those bluebells. The aroma of those bluebells is just ah oh, fantastic. I love it. I love it. Well done. Image 27, um, flowering tree, is it a flowering cherry? I don't know, but it looks so good. It's really a spring photo, isn't it? And look what the photographer has done. They've brought the stalk of the flower in from the bottom left-hand corner. Well done. Very good. Now, one or two little marks in the sky, which look as if they might be dust bunnies, on your sensor and please ask me later if you don't understand that phrase uh, and I really like that as a chocolate box image to print that put it on your box of chocolates and give it to your loved one I think that's lovely I really ought to do that for Heidi shouldn't I oh well there you go I've said it now now I'll have to do it um, okay very nice image indeed, well composed, well exposed. What's the danger? The danger is that the sun was shining. So what I hear Bill say? Well, because you're beginning to get onto the edge of burned out highlights and deep dark shadows. Now this image doesn't have burned out highlights, but I merely mention it as a warning. Beware bright sunlight. I see a hint of a stroke. I'm not sure it's just a, an optical illusion on my screen, but it looks like a dark blue stroke around it, which if it's really there, gets a tick in the box. And if it's not, well, I'm seeing things. Maybe I am seeing things. Yep, I like it a lot. Thanks for submitting that one. Image 29, I love it. Well, well, well. Three little ducklings. The magic number three. You know, in photography, three works brilliantly well. 
Now, how much of a cookery, how much cookery has gone into this image, I do not know. But there's th each of the chicks, each of the ducklings, has a, a highlight in the eye. That's extremely difficult to achieve in reality. Uh, but nonetheless, it gives me a pinpoint. It gives me a catch light, and I love it. The ducklings are walking in from the left-hand side. I love that. The sharpness of the daisies on the ground drops off into softness as we go into the background. Beautifully done. Very, very well done. Uh, and, of course, the ducklings really were there on the day, weren't they? Not sure why we've got a, a black line across the top of the, uh, of the image there, uh, unless it's one of those taken through the peephole of a pillbox or... Uh, as Suzanne would tell us, taken through a coach window. Um, like that very much indeed. Yes, uh, I think for sheer um, audacity uh, and skill and photoshopping technique. Oh, and there's a stroke as well, which isn't too bright. It's just the right shade of white. This has got to go into the into the highly commended. From which, from the pool of which... I've got the difficult judge, uh, uh, um, task of judging a winner, maybe a second winner, I don't know. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm struggling, this is so good. I love it, I love it. Well done to the uh, photographer. There's a lot gone into that. And of course it's absolutely true, isn't it? The camera never lies. They were there on the day. There were highlights in their eyes. There were daisies sharp in the foreground and blurring into softness in the background. No cookery whatsoever has gone on, I am led to believe. Uh, okay, tell me another one. That's a goodie. I like that. It actually made me smile as well. Image 31. Spring. Love it. The spring scenery. The photographer here has waited until that cloud moved just into the right position to fill the space in the top left-hand corner. They've used a, a, a what is that? A, a tree? A, a tree lit? What do you call a tree lit? I don't know. Anyway, on the right-hand side, just to hold in our eye, we're intrigued by looking into the woods and seeing what's going on. It's a very, very pleasant spring scene. I don't know whether my screen is giving me optical illusions again, but it looks like a dark blue stroke on my screen around there, which would have been a good idea if it went on all four sides. Um, I like that a lot. Very, very pleasant. Thank you for putting that in. That was image 31. Moving on to 32. And we have the judge's problem of what on earth is that bird called and I don't know and I'm not a birdie birder so I'll just leave it as a very well taken portrait of a bird. I love the way the, the water in the background has drifted into softness whilst retaining the wavelets. Very nice indeed. like that a lot. Uh, we don't have a, a catch light in the bird's eye um, not too worried about that because we have got its beak, we have got its feathers, and it's doing something. Um, one of the, the jokes amongst judges is it's a bird on a stick. Well, this isn't a bird on a stick. This is a bird doing something. I don't quite know what it's doing, but it seems to be wading in the water looking for whatever these these birds eat. And uh, so it's it's more than your average bird on a stick photo, uh, though I was challenged in a, a recent judgment that I carried out uh, not a million miles away by having not a bird on a stick, but a lizard on a stick. It, it was very nearly the most boring picture ever of a, a lizard, which could well have been dead, <laughs> nailed to the stick, um, doing nothing at all. Look, um, if you're going to take wildlife photos, ensure that you delete any where the animals are not doing something. They must be doing something. Even if they're fox cubs just peeking through from under your shed 
or birds in flight, or birds wading and looking for food, or lizards eating something. Um, but a bird on a stick or a lizard on a stick, it might just as well be glued on there or nailed on there, you know. Um, so, yes, very well seen. Not an easy photograph to take. I like that very much. I think I'd uh, include that in my commended, my highly commended um, collection because of the difficulty of taking it. And it is well taken. So well done, Mr. or Mrs. or Miss. Image 33. Some grass springing through the boards in a what looks like a, a patio or a walkway. Um, I actually am quite challenged by that photo uh, because I'd, I'd really like to letterbox it. A vertical letterbox. Really chop off almost a third of the image on the left hand side and really turn it into quite a challenging photo. Uh, and I like it very much. Uh, I particularly like the, the way that the shadow of the the grass or the reed or whatever it is, is cast onto the wood in the background. Uh, a, a suitable choice of focal point or focus and a very suitable choice of aperture, leaving the planks of wood uh, drifting into softness in the background. That's well seen. That's a, that's a photographer's photo. That's one that your mother would say, well, why did you take a picture like that? And you can say, well, David told me to. So I think that's a cracker. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to put that in my commended pile. Gosh, you're making it difficult for me this month. You're so good, you lot. You really are. I'm going to give you such a cracking difficult one next month. Oh, I've got to make it too difficult. I don't know. I've got to, got to weed out the men from the mice here. Oh, the girls. Oh, never mind. <laughs> anyway, cracking good one into my collection of highly commended because I think it's extraordinary. I love it. Well done. Image 34. Cows and calves. A very pastoral scene. I like that a lot. My eye is distracted by the sky at the back and I definitely would take off um, half an inch from the, the top of the image. Um, the the cows uh, have a habit, well, they have a necessity to chew the cud. So having eaten and filled up one of their seven stomachs, they, they have to regurgitate and chew and chew and chew some more. So they're not really doing a lot, are they? And well, once again, we're back to birds on sticks. Well, these cows and calves aren't doing anything. So you need to stir them up a little bit. Trouble is, if they're anything like the cows freshly released into the pasture with their calves uh, that I was trying to photograph last year. They then charged me, so I, I think I... Well, you've never seen me run, but anyway, I have to say I ran like Billio. Um, cows, birds, lizards need to be doing something. It's a pastoral scene, and it's well seen. It's well focused. Thank you for submitting it. Image 35, a beautiful little piece of a spring garden, uh, well exposed, camera unfortunately is rather high and could have been lowered considerably so as to give a, a, a lower aspect. I know what you're going to say, it's alright David's saying get down low, it's getting back up again that's the difficulty, I know, nonetheless, hold your camera down low, point it in the rough direction having set your various uh, adjustments to the, the, the magic three things, and push the button, and then push the button again, and then push the button again. Then get somebody else to lift you back up again. My eye is distracted by the soil and the stones on the right-hand side, and that could easily have been cropped off to give me a square format. And I do like a square format. Uh, did you take several photos? Well, I know you did. Did you try photographing from below the bluebells up through the blossoms? I'm sure you did. Did you try putting your camera over there on the right where that soil is and taking an image into the light? I'm sure you did. I'd like to see those because I think you probably could make a very pleasant 
uh, triptych, three photos that go together, having positioned your camera in three different uh, positions uh, around that subject. So you have jelly well done and more to do on that topic. Image 36. Very, very intriguing image. I think I know where it is. I feel I'm there. I'm going down that path. The path is bringing me in from the bottom left-hand side. And it's taking me through to the picnic table. I can't quite see the gate beyond. But maybe it's on the right-hand side of the image, of which I will speak in a moment. And my friends have walked on past the picnic table, through the gate, and they're in the field beyond. And they give a sense of scale. So I like that very much. Once again, I think we have two photos here. Uh, the tree in the centre right is really dividing the photo into two. And I'd really crop out everything from the tree to the right, giving me quite a long, tall letterbox image. I love that spring green in the uh, in the foliage as the trees are bursting into leaf. So there's my first photo. I love it. There's another photo there, and I think you would have had to wade through the stinging nettles to get the image that's begging to be taken on the right-hand side. I see a hint of a gate and a fence and a path on the right-hand side. So here's your homework. Go back. Take that image again, move two or three metres to the right and take the image that includes the gate on the right-hand side that's tantalising me, that's peeking through and it's saying, David, take me, take me, photograph me. Yeah, I like it very much and I think there are some, some improvements. I think we can go on and give you homework on that one. Well, there you are, ladies and gentlemen, and... Uh, Thank you for submitting all of those. Well, there we are, ladies and gentlemen. What a superb set of submissions. I am overwhelmed by the quality, the diversity, and the sheer intuition, intuition I don't mean that, initiative of the uh, of the participants you've all done astonishingly well so well done to all of you now of course as i have said we have a collection of the best the best of the best from which i have struggled and by gum i struggled to choose a winner and the winner is Congratulations and celebrations When I tell everyone that you're in love with me Congratulations and you 